So in today's video, I want to talk about something that I've been dying to talk about for a while, label casting. And there's a tons of videos out there on how to do label casts. And everybody wants to take a picture, a favorite picture that they have, and be able to put it on a pen. So as I said, the other videos talk about actually doing the casting process. This one's going to be a little different. What I want to do is I want to get you through the steps of taking whatever picture that you have or image that you have and actually getting it on a label so that you can then cast it. I'm not going to talk about the casting process today. We're going to talk about that in other videos. So what we are going to talk about is figuring out your image size. What size image do I need for the kit that I'm working with and the tube that I'm working with? How do I get that image? Is it going to be a picture that I'm going to take? Is it going to be an image that I grab off of the internet? Uh, anything else that I want to use? I want to talk a little bit about resizing so that we get the image down to the size that we need. I want to talk about understanding resolution. There's a big challenge with resolutions where most pictures that you see them on a screen are 72 dpi. The ones that we need to print are 300 dpi and if you're struggling with the dpi we're going to cover that one coming up. Then finally what we're going to do is talk about cropping and then we're going to talk about printing. One of the things though that I want to make sure that I hit right off the bat is when we talk about this the image has to be yours. And what do I mean by that? You have to own that image. So typically it's a picture that you've taken or something like that. A lot of people will go out on the internet and they will just right click on an image and they will bring it down and they will cast it. You do not own the rights to that image. So I'm going to leave that caveat in there. I'm going to show you how to do it using images that you own and we're actually going to do one that I do take off the internet for a company that I actually own the image on so then this way you get a much better idea of how to do it and change resolutions as opposed to a picture. So with that being said, we're going to get ready and we're going to get going and the first thing that we're going to do is figure out how do I figure out what size image do I need for the tube and the kit that I'm working with. So now I'm going to actually show you how we do the measurement on this. So the tube that I'm going to use is what I call or it's a tube from a diamond neural. And a diamond neural, I love the kit. It's basically a Sierra kit, but it's got a little bit more elegance to it. It's a twist pen, same exact dimensions as the Sierra tube, same exact dimensions on the drill bit. It's 27 64 So we're going to take this, we're going to do a, a diamond neural, and let's figure out what the dimensions are of the label that we're going to need. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to measure the length, and that one's going to be real easy, right? I'm going to take the, the tube, I'm going to align it to the, to the number one, the one inch mark on here, because we don't want to use the uh, end of a tape measure, because remember, we've got that little play in there for an inside-outside measurement, and that's how tape measures are designed. So you can see here, when I do this, it's just under two and a quarter inches. So for what we're going to do, we're going to call it two and a quarter inches. I know that I've actually looked it up. And uh, they say that it's it's just like 2.22, somewhere in that range. And this would be 2.25 that we're measuring it. And we're going to add a uh, 16th of an inch anyway. So our first dimension, real easy. We now have the length, right? Getting the, the, the diameter or the width of the label is typically a little bit harder. And I can tell you that we can do the math, right? We can simply say... 27 64 I can take 27 divide it by 64 and then I can multiply it by uh, 3.14159 as we all remember in our grade school days and I would be able to find the the width if you will of the label there's a lot easier way of doing it because if I had to do a junior gent and I have to convert millimeters to inches and then take the inches to a fraction and, and move that down oh my god that would be a challenge so I'm going to tell you what we're going to need is a ballpoint pen and a piece of painter's tape. We're simply going to take the painter's tape, move that out of the way, and I'm going to wrap, starting on the tube, I'm going to put the painter's tape on there, and I'm going to put it a little of an angle, not a lot, because I don't want a lot of play in there, and I'm going to rotate it around. And so now you can see I've got it overlapping. The overlap is pretty dramatic because I'm trying to show it to you using the uh, using it as an example. But now I'm simply going to take a blue pen, a pen and I'm going to draw a line. And that line goes across both. You can see it there. It's going across both flaps. So now when I take this tape, 
off and I put the piece of paper down, now you can see here's my start and there's my end dimension. And so if I take this now down and I put my tape measure over it, can you see that? And I'll move it over so we don't get any kind of uh, uh, dimensional problem. I'm at just under 1130 seconds. So it's it's one inch and 1130 seconds. And if I wanted to be real real uh, retentive about it, I would probably call it 2160 fourths. So I know that my dimensions are two and one quarter by one, and I'm going to call it as I said 2160 fourths. And we're going to use those numbers coming up in a minute when we actually do the calculation and finding out what my tube is going to be. But using the blue painter's tape, you can see here, it's a heck of a lot easier way of doing it. So here we go. We're going to get to the next part. So now that we know what size image we need, what we're going to do is I'm going to turn this over and I'm going to record the screen and I'm going to take you through how we actually resize the image, crop the image, and get it all prepared so that we can go off and print it. So now for the fun part. What we're going to do is we're going to find an image that we have on the internet. We're going to be able to bring it over. We're going to change the resolution on it. We're going to crop it. And we're also going to change the size, the height and width on it. Save it as a JPEG and prepare it for printing. So let's start. As I said, the first thing is, is your image. And in this case, I ask the woman who designed this website. She does a fantastic job designing websites. And I said, I'd like to make you a pen and I'd like to use your logo. Is it okay to use your logo? She said, yes. So here we go. All I'm going to do is here's where the logo is. I'm simply going to right click on it and I'm going to say, copy the image. Now I have that image in memory. So now I'm going to go over to Adobe Photoshop Elements. I love to use Adobe Photoshop Elements because I think it's a great middle of the road program. It's got, as you can see here, a lot of functionality here and features. And being that this is just a beginning guide into it, we're only going to go and we're going to hit a couple of them on top. But you're going to be able to see that if, as you progress with this, you want to be able to bring in an image and change the colors or change the hue or change anything on the image, you can do that. You'll be able to use the tools in Photoshop to be able to adjust the image. And then once you have that image completely adjusted, you'll go through these final steps. These steps will remain the same, but you'll be able to adjust the image beforehand. So now we're just simply going to say um, file new image from clipboard. And there's the image. It's already popped up for me and it's it's in the program ready me for me to do some work. As you can see here, down here, I got a lot of nice white space. And this is great. This is what we need when we're going to do an overlap on an image. So when we wrap it around the tube, we're going to want a little bit of an overlap. And I typically suggest when we're first starting out, a sixteenth of an inch. But as you get better and you get more used to wrapping the labels around the tube, we're going to be able to cut that down to probably a thirty-second of an inch. But even as you're doing that, you want to be aware of the image. So you can see here, if I've got all this nice space down here, if I take the, the label when I'm done with it and I start my wrapping here and I wrap it around going up this way, then all this stuff on top here will simply be on the label down here and it won't cut anything off. So it's really important to consider what my overlaps are going to be and what space I'm going to need. But you can see here, I got a little extra space over here that I don't need. So I'm simply going to come over here. I'm going to select my cropping tool. I'm going to crop the image. I'm going to say OK. And now I've got the image. I've got it ready to be cropped. So I've got it cropped and I'm ready to, to work the rest on this on this image. So the next thing is to change the resolution. So we're going to come in here, file, resize, image size. And everything we're going to do from this point going on is going to be just in this one dialog box. If you're familiar with taking images off the internet, they usually come at 72 DPI. It's DPI, it's pixels per inch, it's whatever we want to call it. But 72 is really the depth that your monitor has. So you can only have 72 dots per inch on a monitor. And 
what we really need is 300 for our printer. Most basic printers, home printers, require 300 dots per inch. So you think that's real complicated? It's not. We're simply going to take the resolution and we're going to change it to 300. And you can see here, it adjusted a lot of stuff on top. So what that did was Photoshop did all the work for us. It's taken it from 72, it's resized it to 300, and it's added all the pixels in that we need. So you can see here this image became very big. It's 10 inches by 4 inches. But that's clearly not what we, we need. Remember, in our image, this way going across the image is 2 and a quarter. And this way going up and down the image is 1 and 21 64ths. And we're going to want to add a sixteenth of an inch all the way around it for our overlap. So let's now do the calculation for finding out what the width and the height of this image needs to be. So I'm going to bring up a calculator. And as I said, you know, a quarter, I think, well, let's first start with the sixteenth of an inch. Let's find out what we need for it to be a sixteenth of an inch. So I'm going to take one divided by sixteen. And that's 0 0.0625. That's what we're going to have to add all the way around our image to get the 16th of an inch on top and on the bottom and on the right and left. So let's start out with two and a quarter and let's convert that. Well, I think we all know what a quarter is. If we do one divided by four and equal, it's 0.25, but it's two inches plus that. So we're going to add our two inches in. So now it's 2.25 inches is the overall length of the tube. We want to add our 16th of an inch on there to get our overlap. So I'm going to do plus 0.0625. And that's our final dimension. We want the label to be approximately 2.31 inches. But remember, we're doing something in 300 dots per inch. So now we got to convert this to dots. So if it's 2.31 inches and we've got 300 dots per inch, we simply have to take that number and multiply it by 300. And it's 693.74. That's our width across the, uh, across the image. So let's go back over here. And instead of being 693, we're just going to say that it's 694. We're going to round up a little. And that's all we needed to do. Now we got to find out our height. So if the calculation, you're unfamiliar with it, or you want to go back and rewind and look at the calculation, that's fine. But we're going to do it now on the height, the exact same way that we just did it. So let's pull up our calculator, and it's 1 and 21 64ths. So let's do the 21 64ths first. We take 21 divided by 64, and that's our number, 0.328. And we said it's 1 and that, so we'll add our 1 inch back in. And now we got to add in the 16th of an inch overlap that we want in there. So once again, that's the 0 0.0625. So I'm going to say plus 0 0.0625 equals. So I got 1.39. And now once again, we just got to convert that to dots per inch. So we're going to take that, multiply it by 300. And you're going to see here we got 417.18. So we're going to come in here and we're going to say our height is 417 and we're done now one of the things that i said earlier on is that there's a lot of tools in photoshop one of the things that it can do is it can allow you to do your constrained proportions that means when i'm scaling this it would scale perfectly down across and height so that i don't get any kind of elongation on this one i'm not going to constrain it because for this pen it's really not going to matter you're going to you're still going to get the essence of where we're going for and so i'm going to just and you'll see it here if i simply say okay see it took the image and it made it seem a little bit taller and thinner across the board but for our image and for the purpose of doing this this is fine as you progress and you use this tool more and you get into more of the advanced techniques you can actually crop at the exact size that you need so you never run into this uh, anamorphic scaling that's going on but you know what as I said for a beginner and just getting used to it this is going to be fine so now all we got to do is we got to save the image so I'm going to come in here I'm going to say file save as we'll put it on the desktop and let's call it the tray logo and we're going to save it as a JPEG JPEG is by far one of the most universal file formats 
and it's the easiest one to use. We're going to import this image into Microsoft Word next. So this is an, an image file that Microsoft Word is very used to using. So I'm going to click Save. Now it gives me a whole bunch of options here as to what kind of quality I want on this image. For what we're doing and the small area that we're covering, medium is going to be fine. So I'm simply going to say OK. The image has now been saved. Most of our work is done. Now we just got to get into it and print the label out. So I like to use Microsoft Word. So I'll bring up Word and you can see here I've got it set up. You have two ways of doing your printing. We have portrait, which is the traditional way that we read a paper, or what we call landscape, which means that the page gets rotated 90 degrees. I like to um, do everything in landscape mode. So you can see here the paper became a little bit longer. The other thing that you got to be aware of is your margins. So in this case, I'm going to leave my margins at one all the way around. And in a minute or two, I'm going to explain what the margins are going to do and how that's going to help us. So now all we got to do is come in here, say insert picture from this device. I'm going to go to my desktop. There's the logo I want to insert. I click on it and I say insert. And now I'm ready to print. I'm ready to print this, cut it, and away we would go in being able to do the finished casting on it. But once again, I just want to note something. If I unclick this and click over here, notice when I print this, because it's a white background on a white sheet of paper, I have no idea where I want to cut this. So I want to give myself some sort of cut lines or some guidelines for where I want to be cutting this. Now I could have done that back in Photoshop and I could have put a bounding box on there and things like that. Really complicated to do it that way. So now I'm going to do is I'm just going to do it in Word. I'm going to give myself a bounding box. So I'm going to click on it. I'm going to right click. I'm going to say format picture. It's going to give me a whole bunch of options. I'll choose the paint bucket, which I know is where I'm going to get my border. I'll click the line and I'll say, give me a solid line. And now I've got a border around the image. So now if I just click over here, notice I got my border around the image and that will give me my cut line. Now, remember, we've got a 16th of an inch all the way around. So with having that 16th of an inch, now we can cut on that line and still be fine. We're not that close to it. So having that line is an incredible help to us. But this wouldn't be a terribly efficient use of paper, right? I've got, uh, you know, an uh, eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper, and I'm only printing one image. So I can come in here, I can click on it, I can right click, I can say copy, give myself a couple spaces and paste it, give myself a couple spaces on the other side of it, and paste it, and I can do that as many times as I want. Now I'm ready to go. I simply right click, I sorry, I simply click up here and I say, you know, print, send it to my printer, and I would be done. I would have the images ready to go. So the question comes up though is what kind of paper does everybody like to use? And this paper was brought to my attention at a Midwest Pen Turners gathering, I'm gonna say two to three years ago. And once I, the demonstrator showed us this paper, I would never go back. This is from a company called OnlineLabels.com. And as you can see here, the biggest thing you should notice is that it's waterproof paper. Oops, it's, the paper is waterproof. What this gives us is all that stuff that we had to do in the past with labels when we did label printing. We used to have to paint the tube white because the old labels were porous and would, would fade out. We used to have to, you'd, you'd hear people, and people still do this on social media, where they'll go, well, you know what, I coat mine with Mod Podge, or I coat mine with glue, or I coat mine with clear coat, and I spray it down. With waterproof labels from online labels, you don't have to worry about that. The only thing you need to worry about is whether you're using inkjet labels or laser. And you can see in this case, I've got an inkjet printer, so I use inkjet labels. If you have a laser printer, you're clearly going to want to use labor, laser. Now, in terms of gloss or matte, it really doesn't make a difference. I typically buy the gloss, but matte works just fine. For everything that I cast when I'm doing my label casting, I'm always using Silmar 41. And when I use Silmar 41, I get a glass-like uh, covering over the image, so I really don't care which paper that I use as long as um, you know, you're using Silmar 41 and you're using the waterproof label. Now, I did mention earlier the margin. 
So if you look at this sheet of paper, it does say that it's eight and a half by 11. It's a solid sheet of waterproof label. And you can see here the little dot represents where the cut line is so you can peel off the label. So as long as that's within or past within the one inch margin that I have on this one, I'm going to be fine. So that's why I use a one inch margin all the way around. I know that when I start the image, I'm inside the peel off line for the image. So with that, we're done. To recap, what did we do? We took an image, we moved it over into Adobe Photoshop, we cropped the image down and we were aware of the fact that we wanted some overlapping on it. We changed the resolution from 72 dots per inch to 300 dots per inch. We figured out how to calculate out exactly how to take the number that we have and make it to the height and the width that we needed by multiplying the inches by 300. Then we took it into Microsoft Word. We pasted it in there and we've got a sheet of labels ready to go. If we needed a bounding box on it, we looked at how to make the bounding box. And we just talked about all the different way, all the preferred labels that most of us use. So with that, we're done here. We're ready to print the labels and adhere them to the tube and then cast them. So hopefully everything you saw there makes sense. Hopefully now you know that what we're ready to do is just simply take that image, cut it, put it on a tube, and we'd be able to cast it. And as I said, there will be other casting videos that I have out there. So with that, I want to do what I always do. I'm going to tell you, thank you for watching and thank you for taking the time. If you have any questions or comments, please fill out the comments below. And I promise you, I look at them and I reply to every single comment that's out there. More importantly, if you like the video, hit the subscribe button. Give me a subscribe, give me a thumbs up. I always appreciate that one. And finally, in the comment section, if there's other topics you want me to cover, please make sure you put them down there. I am covering them as I get them. And actually, this is one that someone asked me for about um, a month ago. So this is one that I am covering. So with that, I thank you. Hope everything's going well. Thanks. This video made possible by the fine folks at Exotic Blanks. For all your pen making needs, Exotic Blanks has you covered. Find them at www.exoticblanks.com and also by Penmakers International, the educational source for pen making.